My ex, 37 male, and I, 40 female, divorced three years ago. We have a young teen daughter and a tween son. A huge part of why I filed for divorce is that my ex comes from generational wealth, but that wealth came with a lot of red tape and there were like four omnipresent lawyers and accountants who treated heirs like they were going to turn into spendthrifts one day. So, during our entire marriage, when we could have done so much to invest and help others with the fortune my ex was blessed with, we were always told that this was technically not our money. Even worse was how my ex treated me. Everything in our marriage was divided into two categories. A. This is generational money and we can only touch it if the powers that be think it's financially prudent. B. This is what I inherited, so your name is not on it. I was finally sick of how everything I did during our marriage seemed to need permission. It was like marital privacy was not sacred and my ex was upset I wasn't okay with it. Most people want to help their spouses succeed and my ex could have stood up to the powers that be or done more to help me start a business, but he didn't. He inherited properties, but only our condo was in my name and I left feeling that there was more to life and relationships that didn't come with all this red tape. After our divorce, we both moved on, but he moved on in a more serious way. Now he has a new wife, 29, and a kid, male toddler. She bounced between careers after college and then turned to showing houses three years ago. From her profile, she didn't have any real deals for two years besides getting broker's fees from the very demand much, much greater than supply college student rental market. And I heard through the grapevine that her old boss occasionally tosses her a bone, again mostly with college student duplexes. But now, my kids were excited because their stepmom was having a party at one of their dad's properties, which is worth $1.4 million, because my ex was selling and just gave her the listing. When she's never really sold anything, it felt like a slap in the face that while my ex never put my name on the property, and the property was ripped from my hands after our divorce like it was an open and shut case, he was letting her own at least 5% and after it as appreciated. The party was all my kids could talk about, saying they were helping make posters and picking the food. My ex's wife even bought my daughter a dress I wasn't consulted on. The last straw was my daughter saying stepmom deserved the listing and she was a great agent. I left the room and told my friend that my kids could either get along with me or their stepmom at this point, and unfortunately my kids both heard. They're both angry but say the party is happening during dad's weekend, so they're going. No side has apologized and I'm miserable with this tension. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You need counselling because you're destroying your own well-being along with that of your children. Based on what you said, your husband's family had money and they kept tight control over it. It was never your money, so you need to get over it. Move on, live your life, and be happy your kids are loved and cared for by their father and stepmother. Exactly. With his inheritance, he was supposed to help you start a business and also you wanted to help others with his inheritance money. It sounds like the powers that be did a great job of keeping that money separate as it should be. Your daughter is a young teen and they're supposed to consult you before buying her a dress? Are you for real? Lady, you better turn this around so you don't lose your kids. Oh, I know it's funny watching a gold digger foam at the mouth because she didn't get money. That money and those properties were being protected for her children from being frittered away by her and her ex and she's all salty about it. The new wife isn't getting 5% ownership of the property, she's just getting a commission as the listing agent. Someone has to get it and whether or not she's good at her job, it keeps the money in the family. The ex-husband is acting entirely in his own self-interest. Lady, you sound like a shallow and immature person who really needs to reassess their behaviour and its effect on others, especially your family. You come off as very jealous, but at least your children seem to have a decent person in their lives, aka their stepmom. To think this is your side of the story, lol. I would love to see your ex-husband's side, or better yet, the truth. I'm sure that would make you a clear winner of Mother of the Year. Good grief. This is so petty, but I don't know if I'm wrong here. My friend Elaine, 39 female, just received news that she'll be a grandma. Her son, 20, got his girlfriend pregnant, also 20, from college. Elaine is very excited that her son, who hasn't even graduated college, has no income and has never had a job, is now going to be responsible for a baby. Oh, and the girlfriend is disabled and she is the one trying to make ends meet. Elaine has become one of those insufferable women who will not shut up about being promoted to grandma because she was the best mom. 
It's one of those cringeworthy things that people put on crappy t-shirts and sell at craft fairs, like all that corny mama bear crap and I'm so crafty I make babies. She's even made stupid jokes about how I need to teach her how to knit now since she's the grandma. The kid has yet to be born. I cannot imagine how obnoxious she'll become. I've tried to be patient and yes, I congratulated her and did the whole song and dance. But when we were mountain biking last weekend, she would not shut up about it. I finally told her that being the best mom isn't what got her promoted to grandma, that all it took was a broken condom and a bottle of Jack. That's not a promotion, that's just falling into the role because someone else messed up. She said the classic, you're just jealous. I reminded her that my son is a tween, so no, I'm not jealous, and that she's acting like a teen who thinks she's getting a new puppy, not a woman whose child just made an enormous, life-altering mistake, and that I would be ashamed of my child if he got a girl pregnant and expected her to be the one to pay the bills when she's disabled. Once we cleared the next segment of the trail, she told me I was judgmental and witchy and that I'd understand one day when I was promoted to grandma. I told her that if she was going to speak in painfully unfunny mom group cliches for the rest of her life, this would be our last outing. She huffed and told me to lighten up. I told her to get her head out of the clouds. Am I the idiot? I think maybe I just can't stand all the cutesy wootsy mommy blogger BS. I'm a superhero because I'm a mom. No, you're not. You're the same as every other person that's ever had kids. Going with not the idiot, while her son is clearly making mistakes, if she chooses to focus on the blessing of a grandkid, then so be it. She wants to maintain a positive outlook. However, when a friend keeps harping on the same topic for months on end, it gets old. When something you consider ridiculous becomes their entire life's focus, they get bored. Corny mama bear crap. Oh, how we hate this. Yes, precious. You are the idiot. Wow, you start right in on denigrating her son and his disabled girlfriend, completely fail to reflect on why your friend might consider being a grandma to be good news, and then threaten to break contact with your friend if she doesn't stop being excited about becoming a grandma. Do I have all that right? Let me see if I could reframe the facts OP shared. My friend Elaine just got the news that she's going to be a grandma. Her son is still in college, so their only source of income is from the mom, his girlfriend. That sounds like a tough road, but it's good to see my friend happy, and I hope she can be involved while the new family gets their feet under them. It's desperately strange the way OP talks about the girlfriend's disability. Most disabled people work. Many, many, many of them have children. It's not strange, it's judgmental and pathetic. Oh, and the girlfriend is disabled. Ick. Ableist, judgmental, and a major superiority complex. Remember, your son is only a tween, and you've no idea what's in his future yet. There but for the grace of God. Why are you such an insufferable idiot? She's just excited about having grandchildren, and literally have no idea why you have so much disdain. It must suck being that awful. My husband has a pre-tween daughter from his previous relationship. My husband and his ex had a bad breakup since she was also in a relationship with someone else and thought that my stepdaughter was his. She broke things off with my husband. He and I were already in a relationship when he had to take a paternity test and found out he was her father. Her mom also had a problem with me because she thought that my husband would get back together with her. Ex has three other kids with her partner. When she was pregnant with her third, my stepdaughter came to live with us because there was no room for her at her mom's house. At the time, we had a lot going on. We just bought a home and were in the middle of renovations. We stayed in the house to save money. It wasn't a livable situation for a preschooler, but we decided to take her in anyway. We went through tough times with her during these three years, and everything just now became stable. Our home is finished, and financially we're doing very well. I'm currently five months pregnant, and though it wasn't a planned pregnancy, my husband and I are happy about it. However, my stepdaughter is not very excited about a new sibling. She even asked my mom if we would send her away now that we were having a baby. Someone at her school told her she might be sent away because we wouldn't care about her with a new baby in the house, and she's worried that everything will change again. My husband and I decided to throw a big birthday party to make her feel special. Everything has already been planned and paid for by my in-laws and parents. Her birthday is on the 22nd and her party is on the 25th. She had her weekend with her mom and usually she gets dropped off at my in-laws' home, so I'm never in contact with the ex. This Sunday, the ex dropped her off at our home and yelled at me about the party. 
She said a bunch of horrible things about my family and that she would send people to disrupt the party if my family were there. My stepdaughter asked if her party would be cancelled because that's what her mother said. I told her honestly that we might have to cancel it because we want to make sure it's safe and fun for everyone. I told her we would still celebrate her birthday no matter what. Now my husband is a bit upset that I told her that. I just wanted to be honest with her in case we did have to cancel the party due to her mom's threats. Her mom has done this before and I just didn't want her to feel disappointed again. I, of course, didn't mean to upset her. I just think it's awful to lie to her. And then we do end up having to cancel or the party does end up being disrupted. I don't know. He told me he understood but was still upset. My stepdaughter is still very distraught. I just didn't want her to feel disappointed. Am I the idiot? Edit, she said she had a problem with my family being there. She always refers to my family as criminals because my mom is black. She knew we were having a party. My husband told her months ago. I don't even know what the problem really is. She's always felt a certain way about me and she just keeps antagonizing us. My family has done nothing to her. That lady is crazy. I take her threat seriously. You are the idiot. I just wanted to be honest with her. What the heck is wrong with you? She's a severely traumatized young girl and you double down on that trauma with your honesty. Your job as a step-parent and your husband's job as the bio-parent is to ensure this poor baby has a stable, safe-feeling, loving environment. Not one in which you're being honest with her by letting her know that her mother can still hurt her, even at a distance. If you're concerned about safety, call the police. Do not cancel the party. Doing so will be a huge disappointment to stepdaughter and a victory for her mother. And please get your stepdaughter involved with planning for the baby, shopping for clothes, helping to plan for the shower and asking her how the baby's room should be decorated. Also, maybe decorate her room a little, a new comforter, etc. Letting her help plan will make her feel much more involved and tell her no matter what anyone else says, she is going to stay with you and her dad. Also, that kid saying that to her is a bully. If it happens again, you should tell her teacher. My 26 female father, 59, has been dating Paula, 38 female, for four years. I never got to know her well as I was about to move out when we met. My sister, 20, still lives between our parents and likes Paula but finds her annoying. Paula has an odd attitude towards pregnancy. It became obvious when my cousin announced she was expecting back in 2021. Her daughter would be the first great-grandchild. We hadn't been sure my grandma would be around for that. And after an emotional announcement in which everyone was overjoyed, Paula commented that she felt it wasn't a big deal and didn't get what all the fuss was about. She kept that stance for all nine months. But once the baby was born, Paula suddenly became a bit too interested in her, which my cousin was uncomfortable with. My husband, 28, and I announced our pregnancy earlier this year. At first, my father was over the moon. Since this is his first grandchild, I believed that would last. But as I heard from my sister, Paul was just as condescending as we expected, if not more. When I announced anything about my pregnancy or baby, gender, first kicks, ultrasound pictures, etc., Paula always reacted with one of three phrases. Okay, that's not a big deal. Or, is that all she talks about these days? I didn't care about it at first, but after a few weeks, I started to notice that my father was also losing any interest he had in my pregnancy. As the months went by, he became increasingly detached and standoffish. He started to ignore or not pay attention to most of the updates I made on my baby. He also didn't come to our name reveal. We did that instead of a gender reveal. It was literally just a lunch party with a game we made up, or the baby shower because, and I quote, Paula doesn't think it's worth it. My son was born on Halloween, and I decided not to tell my father and Paula. After almost nine months of excuses and disinterest, I didn't see any reason to. I was in the hospital for four days, during which only my and my husband's closest friends and family visited us. The day before we left, I posted a picture of my son on Instagram, and that's where my father found out. He called to ask why I hadn't told him and Paula, or invited them to meet my baby. I didn't lie. They didn't make any efforts to get involved, both emotionally and physically, during my pregnancy, so they'd have to wait for baby news like everybody else. My father and Paula are furious, accusing me of using my son as a pawn and keeping them away out of pettiness. They're saying I'm holding the fact that they missed a few dumb parties against them. 
My husband and pretty much my whole family agree with me. My sister, while mostly on my side, still thinks I should have told my father since this is his first grandchild and he had to find out he was born through social media. She thinks this is all Paula's fault and I should apologize to our dad. Am I the idiot? Edit, Paula has no kids but from what I gather she doesn't want any. You're not the idiot. This really comes across to me as her having unresolved feelings about her decision not to have kids. Perhaps her feelings are exacerbated by people around her having kids, her getting older, being with a much older man, etc. She sounds like she's trying to convince herself and everyone else because she didn't have kids, she has to poo-poo on anyone who wants to celebrate those milestones that she didn't ever have. Totally agree with that. Or she's not missing the having kids part, but is mad she missed out on the attention she would have received as the pregnant person. Your dad made a choice, and that choice was to care more about Paula's feelings than yours. You're doing great. Set the boundaries and stick to them. You don't owe them a relationship with your son. That needs to be earned and nurtured by him. Yeah, also, infertility and other reproductive issues is still a taboo subject, so it's not uncommon for people to say or act like they don't want kids when really they've had no choice or had to make choices that were difficult. It doesn't excuse the behavior, but I think there's room to recognize that you just never know why somebody might act weird about kids or pregnancy. I'm going with everyone's the idiot because the dad, I think, should have been told and probably feels stuck between his wife and daughter on this issue. Does he not have his own brain? He couldn't go to his grandchild's naming party because Paula didn't think it was worth it. She's perfectly allowed to think that and not attend. However, if the grandfather of the child wanted to be there, he could and should have said to his wifey, have a great afternoon, I'll see you after the naming party. If he wants a grandchild, he must start acting like a father first, and he's not. He wasn't interested then, so why should he be now?